Ugh. <laughs> Boy, you know, I'll just start streaming just as I'm getting on the bike. Gotcha. We'll uh, we'll try to adjust. I am so tired. I got like three hours of sleep. It's gonna be a brutal day. Uh, one thing I want to look at this morning. I want to figure out some stuff with Effect.js because I'm potentially going to use this for some stuff at work. Got that. I want to know how fibers work. No. Yeah, I got it. I want to know. I bet they have stuff in their Discord. I just want to know how fibers work. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if we can find anything here. So in here, there's this concurrency thing called a fiber. So one of the nice properties of effect TS or just effect is that it's very much like writing Gleam or OCaml but in TypeScript and it takes care of multi core concurrency for you so you can write code effectively using the actor pattern like we do in Gleam and get basically free concurrency across all your cores which is generally not a property you find with um, JavaScript and TypeScript um, because it runs on, um, it's single threaded in an event loop, but they've built this runtime with a bunch of useful stuff around it. Built an Embin config following your YouTube video, didn't use all the plugins you used, but got some good ideas. Still not ready to drop Helix for it though. That's fair, that's fair. 
I'm glad you found it useful though. Hopefully. I guess you didn't say that, but uh, well, you did say there were some good ideas. So we'll take that. All right, so what is a fiber? A fiber is a small unit of work or a lightweight thread of execution. Uh, I guess I could ask, we have a group at work that I could ask. Okay, sorry chat, I was typing something. <clears throat> morning Wiru, morning Mixed Nuts. Now that you work at Vercel, can I blame you for the state of the web ecosystem? You can, you can. I will single-handedly take the entire blame of the web ecosystem on my shoulders. Look at this, this example in their blog post. I want to write TypeScript like this. I like this a lot. Exponential back off, uh, runtime data type checking, uh, concurrency model built in, error or result in option types. This might be my best bet <laughs> at writing functional programming at work. I have not. I've got the I've got the basics down. That's um I need like the next level of video. I need like I need a video on the concurrency model. I need to understand how fibers work. I've figured out that I can share data across fibers with a synchronized ref. Um, well, maybe this tells us something. I didn't see this article. Not React fibers. No, they have their own abstraction. Fibers are their, uh, fibers are almost like, um, from what I can tell in the way they've written their docs, Fibers are almost like uh, Elixir or Gleam processes or like Go routines. 
So I'm trying to figure out they've actually built a scheduler into the runtime here. Because I know it ships a fiber runtime. I just don't completely understand facts. Eleven forty plus might be useful. See, that doesn't... So that makes me think that maybe they're not even taking care of clustering across your CPU cores. Oofed effect. Why do you say that, 6412? Three dot oh just came out and the API is now stabilized. Oh, like oof, nice. There is a group of people at work that are piloting it, and I can probably make a good case to use it on my team. And I read through like all the docs last night because I couldn't sleep. And uh, I'm just trying to iron, oh, maybe this is a question. Um, fibers. From what I can tell, it seems like their fiber runtime under the covers is using the cluster modular or uh, worker threads and distributing work across all your CPU cores. Is that true? Is that like, step one of how that works. Because I, I can't 100% tell. Because like if we go to concurrency, so by default, it's sequential execution, which is fine. Then there's this unbounded concurrency. Is this still single threaded? Because like if you go to their main .com, it's gonna scroll through clustering and workflows. This, do clustering. That's what I wanna know, and I can't find anything on.
Okay, I'm reading that doc. All right, so one of my coworkers, Toby, who seems to be pretty involved in this, he's actually in one of the toast. I don't know if he's a contributor. He might be. So I've read that. Uh, does it doesn't mess anything about CPU? What about cluster? So I've read that and it wasn't completely clear if it's still only executed on a single uh, CPU core slash is still or if the runtime takes care of clustering and distributing work across all cores. Okay, cool. So it'd be plausible, plausible and inexpensive. Sorry, I'm talking with somebody at work about this expensive to spin up thousands, if not tens of thousands of fibers. I've read those docs and it still wasn't completely care of its own. Okay. Well, if it's workers, as long as, I mean, I guess we can look at the freaking code. What are we doing? Let's just look at how they implement packages. Uh, it's probably in effect, maybe platform. Uh, source. Yeah, I I feel you, Ethan, because like things like I've been bitten by I've seen a mess of Ramda, I've seen a mess of FPTS, I've seen a mess of um, Nest JS. Although on the other hand, I've also seen as much as I freaking hate Nest JS, I've also worked on a project where uh, we sculpted Nest.js in a very, very uh, practical way, even though I hate it. All right, here's our fiber. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I would try to write some lint rules. Okay, so fibers are still single core. Uh, 
because on the site and wasn't sure if that was baked into the core runtime and using worker threads or the custom module by default under the covers. Found a preference for pipe state of first verse the yield. Uh, the last song, this song is Eric Doa, and then the last song was, uh, I don't even remember what we just listened to. Maybe Playlist, was this it? I don't even remember what we just listened to. Hold on, I gotta share a clip. We, we, we gotta, I gotta share this with a coworker quick. And we're just gonna play it right now, chat. Okay, I'm getting hella distracted. I have stuff I can look into later. Let's write some gleam, shall we? have a slightly interesting idea Fib.
Okay, I'm sorry. I'm getting so distracted, chat. I'm like, I've got pulled into a, a pretty decent conversation in Slack. Uh, let's go. Let's play my radio. What up, JD? Welcome back to Effect another day, because uh, we might try to build something on stream with Effect sometime soon, just so I can get a sense for what it would feel like building a small production service with it. the guy that does archetype David Bloss right Right, it's David Bloss. David Blass. And it was, uh, Okay. Bum, bum. Oh yeah, we do need to upgrade to Gleam 1.0. So let's see if it got out to Nix yet. Uh, Gleam. Still in 1.1. So the good thing is we have a flake with an overlay that we can update ourselves. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm -hmm. Dur and below. I'm going to need, where is that? That Shaw. Thank you very much. Come drop you in there. Bada bing, bada boom. Do that.
All right, that should be good, right? If we do gleam dot dot vert dot dot Jesus, I am so tired, chat. I was up till three thirty a.m. I thought uh, I thought that I had a leak in my house last night, and at three in the morning, I drained the water from my entire house. And oh uh, God, remember yesterday morning we were talking about sensitivity to caffeine. I didn't think about it, and when I went for my haircut. Uh, I, they like made me an espresso and I drank it at my haircut appointment. And then I was up to like two 30 and then, uh, I was lying in bed and I just heard this like ticking noise and it was coming from my bathroom. And then I was like, Oh fuck, there might be a leak. So I shut off the water, drained the whole house. And then I thought I still heard it, and it's right where the main line comes into the house. I was like, "Fuck! It does the is the main leaking in my wall right now?" And um, because I could still hear what sounded like water dripping in the wall where the main line comes into the house. I had main turned off. I had already drained the entire house, and uh, I went freaking crazy. Like I checked everything. I was about to call like an emergency plumber last night, and. Uh, eventually i found the problem we have a screened in outside porch and we recently installed a fan and the fan was still running and it must have just been circulating just the right way that it was shaking uh like a pipe in the wall and making a noise and I caught that the fan was on at like 3.45 in the morning after I tried everything. Like I went up to the attic to check if like something with the AC system was going wrong. Like, dude, I, I'm so tired. I have like three hours of sleep tots right now. Yeah, no, I like once I figured out what it was, I was relieved, like. I was this close from calling like a like an emergency overnight plumber because I thought the main line into the house was leaking in the wall. Is yeah. Woo! Let's do a build. Gleam depths update. Reload save. Ah, here we go. Effect TS cluster. That's the library we're looking for. This is the guy that's going to cluster across. So they have some abstraction called a pod. So I have this second idea that one of the problems that Gleam has right now is that for asynchronous code, they can't, you can't write FFIs, you can't write libraries that target both JS and Erlang runtimes. And I think it could be possible if you really narrow down or slim down some of uh, Gleam OTP and Erlang that you could emulate, um, you could emulate the concurrency model from Effect TS and write, well, that's the thing is that because they have the, um, they have their scheduler and they have uh, fibers in Effect TS, you don't get function coloring. Um, you can, they basically use these fibers to replicate an actor model, which is exactly what OTP is. So like you could potentially make a series of, um, a series of asynchronous gleam code that 
has an opinionated version of opinionated and slimmed down version of OTP stuff and targets affect TS under the covers and have like a shared concurrency model. So that's like an idea I have uh, in the back of my head. Uh, my switch plate, I don't know. Cyprian, whatever comes with the default Q4. So uh, now that I'm done being distracted, I say that. I'm gonna be very distractible today because I'm so tired. Okay, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. we wanna come and we need to add a way for the main process. Oh, did we end up making this yesterday? See, Ethan. We need, okay, so we are making the mailbox and passing that in there. Okay, maybe we are okay. We do need to, um, we need a API to subscribe to things though. And the question is, how do we want to, how do we want consumers to subscribe to events? So we're going to, this is something I want to take my time on thinking about. Hmm. So maybe we have this API where it's going to be like, ignore that and ignore this. And we can have a public function where we do something like pub function subscribe. And this will take a, um, event sub, which will just be our event sub, or what do we call this, client? That's kind of how Gleam, how Gleam works too. They don't use option often and instead use result data type. Um, what do you call it? Uh, we'll just call this, uh, your type and nil. I have this idea for gleam in effect. Right now, it's really, right now, you can't target both Erlang and JS runtimes for async libraries in Gleam because of function coloring 
with promises, but I think you could make a really uh, trim down, slim down um, version of uh, Gleam OTP and Gleam Erlang that modeled uh, the modeled effects fiber mo um, impl and then target both. Which would be in a crazy um, productivity boost for that ecosystem. Okay. I'm sorry, chat. I am. Uh, let's see here. So, explain to me what glitch function will be to the uninitiated. So, glitch is just a um, uh, a Gleam library for communicating with Twitch. So, we have um, part of the event sub API built out. We have the authentication API built out, so we can get OAuth tokens. We can refresh them. Uh, we have the chat API built out. So basically just a bunch of code for interacting um, generically with Twitch through Gleam. Yeah, we're actually gonna, I think we should actually get to um, rewriting this bot from TypeScript to Gleam this morning. Okay, I'm gonna close Slack because I'm getting so distracted by it. And let's open that. Okay, yeah, no problem. This is a question-friendly stream. Let's rotate this and we are gonna want to grab this type here. We wanna get a event subscription request coming in here. Description. Hmm. I'm going to want to go here. Okay, so that is its own type. That's good. Um, we'll just call this a subscription, I guess subscription request. We gotta go import that. I don't think we have imports in the LSP yet. We don't. Okay, so that um, chat, I'm gonna go throw my mug on the charger real quick and let the dogs out. Um, yeah, little dog is asking to go outside. Um, I will be right back. BRB letting the dogs out.
Doggos are saying good morning, chat. Say good morning, Moody. Say good morning. Oh, thank you for the kisses. Thank you for the kisses. Say hi to chat. Up here, Bodhi. Say hi. Up here, look. Look, yes. Good boy. Yeah, that's good puppers. That's good, boat. Yes. You're a handsome man. You're a handsome gentleman. You are. Good morning. All right, down. Winnie, come here. Up. No, Bodhi, you already had your turn, you attention whore. Come here, Win. Up. No, okay. Not gonna work. We tried chat. Bodhi's just an attention whore. Alright, let's send the Nana sign of life text this morning. Just got my notification for it. Uh, good morning, Nana. Are you alive? Check, check. And let's grab that, and we're gonna come down to here. We get this, and so when we get a subscription, we are going to take this, and we wanna come down. I need to copy some code. I need that right there. Throw that right there. Uh, and then we get the subscription request. Maybe we just call this subscribe. Oh, we could even return like a subject potentially from this. <laughs> yes, I am, Dylan. Thank you for your concern as always. Love and miss you, Nana. Kissy faces. Nana. My, uh, my Nana, um, I, a bunch of chat knows this, but my Nana is very, uh, she's one of the strongest women I know, but she's, uh, a tad bit dramatic. Um, and she's been, she's been telling the family she's going to die every year for probably the past 15 years. Um, and she has recently asked me to start checking in with her in the mornings uh, so somebody just doesn't stumble upon her dead body. Uh, so that's my Nana. Uh, we, love her, we love her to death, uh, quite literally. Okay, so this is gonna be our client. And what does this return? Yeah, that is what we wanna return, maybe. We could do this interesting thing where we return a mailbox for people to subscribe on rather than exposing these raw messages. <laughs> uh, does Nana support McLaren? Uh, I feel like Nana would probably be more of a, she'd probably be like either, she'd probably be a Ferrari fan if I had to peg her to a personality. Like she's, um, she grew up in Philly. Uh, she's been divorced since she was in her 40s, probably. Um, yeah, Nana's just a, uh, a very interesting character. Does Glean not do return types and function signatures? It does. I'm just letting it be inferred right now. So I could just come over here and be like, yoink. I can do that but it will infer types for you, like OCaml. I, um, I'm typing all of my public functions. Um, I just don't know what I want this to return yet. I, I think I might do something like an interesting function signature. It could be like a result of subject, and then it would be like... Um, G 
GT3 Ferrari. We're talking like uh, we're talking like Ferrari from Ford versus Ferrari, like that that kind of Ferrari character. So like, I imagine this thing. So let's say we get a result back, right? And this would be like, um, in here we could do like case result. And if it's an error of whatever, we just return out um, the result, right? But if it's okay, we just do like, we'll just do, um, let's just do like, uh, okay, process dot new subject and see what happens. So now we have this type, like this is an interesting API. Can I send a, I can send a process back out, right? As a return type. What up Priv? I'm currently writing a simple article about Genie. What is Genie, Priv? And doing some design for a job queue system I'm building for work. That sounds awesome. Just got done at the gym, running to the chiropractor target and then grabbing you coffee. Let me know if you need anything, love you. Okay, uh, Justine, I'm still gonna feed the dogs closer to nine. So, um, okay, I'll text you. <laughs> so here's my idea chat if somebody wants to pick this apart and tell me why that won't work, that'd be great. Otherwise, we might play around with that on stream next week. Nightshade, where are you located at in the States? I feel like you told me before, but I can't remember. Are you in Tennessee? Colorado? Are you in Denver? outside of did have I ever mentioned that I almost moved to Colorado 
I almost moved to, oh, get that off stream. Almost just docks my location again. You see how fast is freaking window shift in the, this side of the Mississippi, not to dox my location there. Fast as fuck, boy. I had a lease signed for a uh, apartment right. Where is it at? There is Lodo. We need to go northeast of Lodo. There it is. I almost had a uh, Winnie Marie. I had a, uh, a lease for somewhere in here in Berkeley, uh, outside of downtown. And then COVID happened and the, the landlord backed out. And then I ended up in Raleigh instead. I have not, I am still leaning towards the, um, uh, the moon lander since it's hot swappable. I just need to like bite the bullet and try it and buy it. I have a, a stipend at work I might try to buy it with. Ergo docs here, nice. Uh. Okay, so how can we, we need, right now this is returning like a generic subject. We would almost need a, um, hmm. How would we want to do this? Well, like the, the thing I like about split keyboards um, is the thumb cluster. That is the thing that I want the most. I actually wouldn't, I don't even care so much about it being split more than I care about the ergonomics of the thumb cluster. I almost need like an existential type here and I can't do existential types. I don't know if I've ever looked at the ergo docs. Mm. It's the same, same company. Oh, I hate that. Yeah, maybe I'll uh, order one of these uh, with my uh, work from home stipend from work. See if we like it. Yeah, 
The other thing we could do here, rather than a subject, I mean, maybe we do just pass a mailbox. And this would just be like a subject um, A for now. And then we can get a PID. We can get a PID from a subject, right? So we could have like a dictionary of PID to mailboxes or like basically How would we do this? Why uh why do you want me to run Mason? Armin, you, hey, how you doing? Is everything working? Um, Armin, uh, what, do you, what specifically are you, t I go through phases of things being broken and working. Thanks, Yushi, you too. So we would need a way right now to like associate this. So what does this have on it? Types subscription. So the problem I'm trying to solve right now, chat, is how we give consumers access to the events they care about. One way I'm thinking about is they can subscribe to a specific event and pass us a mailbox. And when we get that event, we can just pass that mailbox back in um or pass that data into the mailbox the other way we could do is we could just like expose um we could right now in the constructor we're having them pass in a mailbox and they're just getting the raw web mac websocket message and they can just subscribe to everything um Hmm, but how do you map? How do you map this to what did you think of little PP seemed very interesting. I feel like Swalker was on crack last night. He was fucking cracked out and I was enjoying every second of it. Like, I don't know what was going on. He was super excited. Like he couldn't finish a single thought without going down another rabbit hole. It was, it was mildly entertaining to say the least. Literally metaprogramming broke Swalker. Dude was cracked.
Where is create event? Where's that type defined? Create event subscription. Yeah, I want to go to that. I still can't do that, but that's fine. Isn't that what this is? No, that's the types. API slash event sub. Kyle, you missed it earlier. I was up till 3.30 a.m., so I have like three hours of sleep right now. Uh, I accidentally drank es espresso yesterday at like 2.30, 3 o'clock. And then like around 2.30, I was laying in bed still trying to fall asleep. And I heard a like dripping noise in my house. And then I thought I had a leak in one of my pipes. Uh, and I drained my entire house of water and it was still happening and I went crazy and it was like right around the place where the main line comes into the house. So I was like, fuck, does the main line have a leak in it before it gets to the shutoff valve? Because that's where it sounded like it was coming from. So like I went hard trying to figure out what was going on and it ended up being a fucking fan that was shaking a pipe. We installed a fan on our porch and the fan was on and it was just rattling and shaking a fucking pipe. How do you accidentally drink an espresso? Uh, where I go get my hair cut, they always give you like a free beverage and she just knows I really like, uh, like this espresso drink they make. So like, she like kind of had it ready for me, so. It was, well, once I realized it was the fan, because I was getting ready to call a plumber in the middle of the night because I thought the fucking main line coming into the house had a leak in the wall. Because I, it, I mean, I, Justine was even there. She, it sounded like dripping water. Um, but once I figured it out, it was the fan, like, uh. So one way we could do this is we could have like this dict of dicks. We have a dick of dicks, right? I haven't even used a dick in Gleam yet. We could get like import Gleam slash dict. We have our dick now. Yeah, I know. Well, like I got really worried after I drained the entire house. Um and had main off and it still sounded like dripping right around where the main line is. I was like, you have to be fucking kidding me. That's like the worst case situation. <laughs> um, okay. Well, let's pull up the dict API. Does this have a new? It does. So we have a new dict. So let's just pretend we have a, a dict equals dict dot new. Does the have key use structural checking or referential? Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. What would the stream be without you?
Where was that function in here? Map. Uh... Ryan, do you know how Erlang's map get works? Like, how does it find, how does it check membership or equality? It's a term. Turns out it's contingency. Like, If in Gleam, I had a dict where my type was like, let's pretend this dict here. Like I'm, I'm interested in having a dict where it's like, hold on, let me get to the standard library again. Where the type would be like, um, Let's just say we have a custom type for this. Uh, type key, and that would be like um, key, and it would have like um, client ID, I guess, and like um, subscription type. which would be subscription dot subscription type. Right, if we could do something like this, and then that would be a dict of key to subject A or something like this. So when I try to do like has, is this gonna do like referential equality on my keys? Or can I like, could I construct a new key dynamically or a new record dynamically and that would pass? How are maps implemented? Winnie, come here. Good Lord, what a howl. How does it do the comparison? That's what I'm interested, that's what I wanna know. I don't really care about the data structure. I wanna know how they compare keys. Let's go play around with this in the Gleam Playground. And just say uh, key and we'll have, I don't know, foo, string, and bar int. And then we make a new dict. We'll say let dict equals dict dot make and this will be a dict of dict dot dict 
key to, I don't know, we'll just say string, right? Let me, um, There we go. I don't know why that height didn't change. Do something like that. All right, now we have a nice little REPL to play around with. So like if I do this and then we say uh, let key one equals key and it'll be uh, a one. And then we have let key two equals key a one and I say um, let dict equals dict dot I don't know what the API is here insert So dict.insert, and we're going to say dict, and then we're going to say key one, and we'll just say first, right? Then we should be able to do like an IO debug. Um, that's new. And if we IO debug this, yeah, we can ignore that. Yeah, fine. Pub type. So now if I do, the thing I'm interested in is if I do has key, right, but present equals dict dot has key dict key to right this is going to tell us the exact answer i want to know right now there we go structural cool that's really useful to know That's very useful to know. Well, it could be referential, couldn't it? Does Gleam even have referential equality? I don't even know. Or is it always structural? I 
I actually don't know the answer to that. Uh, there's got to be a section on equality, right? Equality. Equality is structural. Guess I should have just read the fucking manual, right, chat? Okay, so that's good to know. So that means we can do what we want uh, here. So the flow that I'm thinking here is that we have this, oh dude, I don't have water. Let me go grab water. Cheers. So maybe we don't need this mailbox, or maybe we do. Because this is what we want to eventually send back out to the person, right? The other thing we could do is a callback. We could take a callback. Uh, this is V8 energy. Uh, I'm not sure, Ryan, we can look. Oh, raw hat, sweet. So I'm working on what the API looks like for consumers to subscribe to events. And I have, I have two or three ideas right now. Um, my first idea is they pass in a mailbox and then we keep a dictionary in the event sub client that maps uh, client IDs and subscription types to mailboxes. And then we can like fan out when we get that event type and put it into the mailboxes. Uh, the other option I'm thinking is um, accepting a callback function. Can you pass functions across processes? If that makes sense. Like if this is a worker of a supervisor, can I just like call this with a callback or yeah, with a callback? Regardless, we're gonna need some sort of dictionary to, uh, Regardless if it's a mailbox or if it's a callback, we need a dictionary. Yeah. Yeah, 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 okay. So I think this ends up being a subject event then, right? Man, I am so freaking tired.
and then we'd have like this I don't think we'd have this well yeah we would want that still this would be like a subscription subscriptions and this would be our uh, dict of um, you'd want like a I know we have this down here but we'll just say um, let me see the haircut uh, I'm not gonna take off my headphones in my head right now because I paused the music and then it's like a whole thing it looks identical to my normal haircut um, subscription key to a subject of event you'll get to see my haircut this weekend one bite Hit me, uh, John. I'll queue him up while I'm working today. Let's go. Oh, we got a ghosty update. Maybe it'll fix my bar that BG ruined for me. Damn it, still not fixed. This will be, um, we can just do dick.new. One way, if you like Ocamel, you gotta do Gleam. I feel like that's sinful to not use Gleam. All right, so we should be able to get um, from this. Uh, where is this? Type subscription type. Yeah.
All right, so we're going to want to return from here a result of a subject of event or it's going to be a twitch error which up here we just bring in uh, change error and then we get type twitch error And we want to get, um, well, I guess we can use our use syntax here. And then we can say, um, Oh, we need this to be like a, an actor. Because we need to update the internal state. Okay, so we're gonna have to change how we're doing this a little bit. Uh, I hadn't considered some of these education, it's not even an edge case, I hadn't just straight up considered this. Uh, this process in general, the client right now, it's a supervisor. I just need, um, I need to be able to send messages to it from itself because I need to update its state. Although that doesn't fully make sense though, right? Because I have to return this state back out. Or no, hold on. I have to think about what this means. It's opaque. Yeah, okay, this is what I want. You should make a supervisor on top of the client, in my opinion. What do you mean by that, Ryan?
So that module that you just shared with me is the same module I'm in now. The This code on the left, this is the supervisor of the WebSocket server. So when I start it, I create a WebSocket server. It's being supervised over here, right here is where it starts. I think I just need to like integrate it with the actor. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's it's confusing language, but the WebSocket server is the WebSocket client to Twitch. Three forty. Okay. Because an actor, what does the actor, where's Gleam OTP at? Let's make this Gleam OTP. Because an actor is just a subject, right? Yeah. So I think possibly, I think what I want to, I, what I really need to do is I need to replace this loop right here with uh, like the handle like this right here. This loop just needs to re be replaced with like actor dot start. And rather than this being Yep, okay, I just figured out what I need to do. So this is gonna be uh, actor.start. The state will be the event sub client. So let's just call this just, I don't know, client. Winnie? Ma'am, wanna go to timeout? I know you don't want to. Good morning, trash puppy. I feel like I haven't uh, seen or talked to you in a while actor.start client and then the loop function will be um we'll have to write that so let's just do to do and let's bring in um import gleam slash otp slash actor and down here i am doing well other than being incredibly sleep deprived And this will return, we'll do use syntax here. And this will be result.try. Uh, my keyboard is a keychron Q4. And then our loop. So let's uh, bring up our token fetcher as reference. We need to write a handle message, which is what our loop does right now. But uh, function handle message. And we need to make a message type. So let's do that. Message will be message. And then state will be um,
Right now, this is just the client. We're gonna have to change our types around a little bit. All good, no problem. Thank you for the follow, by the way, uh, Diama. Super appreciate you. And hello, Zimi, if you're still here. Appreciate you as well, I missed you earlier. So we have this message. And then our message type, uh, this will be a pub type. And our message will be subscribe. And the subscription will take a key, subscription key. And when we get that subscription key, what do we do? Subscription key and a subject of event. And here we'll do case message. And if it's a subscribe, we'll get the key and the mailbox. And we'll come over here. Open up a new scope and we'll say, um, actor dot continue state. And here we're going to say, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, let updated subscriber or subscriptions, I don't know. Subscriptions equals dict dot insert I don't even remember the freaking API for this already. We were just looking at this earlier. Go look at the dict API. So dict into insert into state Dict, yeah, dict insert API, yeah. For the key and insert the mailbox. And then we take this and we say, we have state and we can spread the old state. And then we say subscriptions is going to equal subscriptions. That's how we do that, right? Right, 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 right. So here we then say actor.send. This is actually, I'll just let that get inferred in a second. How did I do this in my token fetcher? Dict in bio. Yeah, we're taking a real middle out approach here. Token fetcher state, which is Look at this lag. Where is this lag coming from? Right, so this will be, all right, we're gonna have to update our types right now because this is wrong. This is gonna be, um, we need to model this. Dude, what is happening? If you know, you know, exactly.
Google Chrome is just being a chonky bitch. I'm streaming right now with 3,000. That's fucking crazy. Okay, so we need to copy this pattern of doing... This is going to be... This is actually gonna be client state. And then we need a message, which we already have down here. So we need to bring this up. Man, this feels so laggy to me. Something feels laggy. I just killed my TMUX session. Let's kill Ghosty. Something is feeling incredibly laggy with my terminal. This should be dead, right? There should be no server. Yeah, okay, so it just restarted. I just got the notification that it restarted. Whatever. It still feels laggy. I wonder if that's the new LSP stuff or if that's just something I upgraded with NeoVim. Something doesn't feel right. Thor's a legend. I loved his, um, his uh, like award speech from the uh, Streamer awards. That was amazing. I love that. Okay, so we have token fetcher state and then our actual client itself. This will be client state. And then we need a public, we need an alias, which is going to be pub type um, pub type client is going to be a alias for a subject of message. Now they just need to split our category between game dev and software dev. That's like the one thing I want so, so badly. Or at least maybe not even split it, but give us filtering controls better than what there are now. Yeah, I, I kind of like walk through the ramifications of splitting it, but I want, I want a better filtering system inside our category or maybe just in general, right? Like, yeah, no, I, I agree with you, Trash.
Okay, so down here we'll do actor dot start. And this will get our state. So we'll just say this is gonna be let state equals that. That'll be our state. And then we have a handle message. Right, so this is going to be a result of start here, right? That's probably what the token fetcher is. Oh, we token fetcher start error. Okay, so let's go make a new error. And we'll have um, auth error. We'll have uh, event sub error. And then uh, we'll just have event sub start error. Down here, we're gonna map this error to be a Twitch error. Over here, uh, we'll say start, and then we're gonna just say state into there. Find that, we find that, that, and then we'll say um, result dot replace error, and we're gonna replace that with a. Uh, event sub error of event sub. I feel like I'm having a stroke thinking about this. Mm -hmm. I wish we could stream to more than one category. That would be cool. Trash, did you start your internship yet? Or when's that start if it hasn't? I think this is gonna be a, um, this has to be a client, right? And then our client on it is just the subject, it's our PID. So then in here, starts the end of May, gotcha. And you're gonna be doing like red, Team pen testing stuff? Is that what I remember? Do I remember that correctly? We should write a handle subscribe. Because in here, rather than doing this, we're just going to do. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm so flipping excited. I'm very excited for you. I think you have uh, I think you have a uh, a pretty bright future ahead of you. I think you've built up a really good community and audience, and I think if you wanted to, you could like end up being a influential figure in this space. Uh, 
Like, I wouldn't be surprised to see you speaking at like conferences in a couple of years. Uh, let's see here. So we're gonna send it to the client and we're gonna send a subscribe message, which will then, we need to make a key, right? So in fact, our message could be, oh no, we do need to make the, the key yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's make the key here. And we'll say, um, let key equals that. And uh, hold on, let's do to do. And we need to get the, oh, frack. I can't get the client ID. I guess it doesn't need the client ID, does it? The key is just a event type because we're only handling one client right now. God, this is so hard to think through. They're down in Miami, Kyle, at React Miami. Okay, so maybe our key is actually just the type for now because we don't handle multiple clients or we don't handle, we're not multi-tenant. <laughs> so I think the key is actually, I think we can actually get rid of the subscription key altogether. And then this is just gonna be a subscription type In fact, that probably isn't even a subscription type. Uh, is it? What are we doing here? I'm like getting myself so confused. There's so many things happening. This would be subscription request, uh, uh, subscription type. And then this needs a mailbox. Uh, let's just say process dot new subject. And let's grab this. Whoops. God, I am so tired. I am struggling this morning, y'all. In fact, this probably doesn't even need to be a mailbox now. This can just be a subject of event. And then we come over here and we pass the mailbox in. This doesn't need to be a result. And in here, we take this, yoink that, and we can't use our use syntax here because we need to return. Changing where that'll be wet. Changing where it equals. 
get rid of result.try. And our state will be state.api client. Right, we need the request. So that's, that's what I was thinking. We can pass the subscribe message rather than the type. We can get that later. We'll take that uh, request. Subscribe to, and then this will be mailbox. And this is actually the subscription request. And then our key will be the subscription request dot subscription type. There we go. Uh, but we need to do a case on this. I remember you doing Nick's at night with BG. Notice you were live in his Discord, so here I am now. Well, welcome in. Thank you uh, for hanging out, Mr. Jack. Do we want to do this in our event loop? Because we can't really broadcast an error. so all over the place this morning with my key binds. I'm so tired. Uh, Ryan, when you create a new subscription to um, some event, do you pass back the raw HTTP request of that? Um, like when your WebSocket client connects and then you have that 10 seconds to register a subscription, do you pass that raw request response back to the caller? Or do you kind of swallow it and do something else? Okay. Okay, I was I was doing what I wanted to do. This is gonna be subscription type. We're gonna come back down here. This will be type. Oh, that's not what we wanted. Be type. And this is gonna go, we're gonna get rid of that. And um, this will just be delete, find that. Yeah, that seems better. Okay, and down here, uh, this is okay. We wanna go here, we wanna uncomment this. This is actually gonna be okay, and this, not okay, Jesus Christ, result. And this will be a uh, Twitch error.
but I don't have access to the, oh, that's right. I don't have access to the freaking state here. How do I get the state? Okay, so that is what we actually want to do here. Okay, this is the pattern we want. This is what I've been trying to do. We need like another message. Where's our errors at? We need a get state. And this is just gonna be a subject of client state. And then our handle message, we're gonna have a get state. And this will be our subject. And then we just do um, actor dot, I guess we can do process.send. Subject state. Actor dot continue state. Yeah, okay. So down here then I can do let state. Uh, we need to make a neat a new little mailbox here. So we'll say let subject equals uh, process new subject and we'll say um, actor dot send uh, 
Uh, I'll show you in a second, Ryan. Send get state. This will be subject. Actually, we'll rename this to. Um, this will be state mailbox. And then we'll, um, oh, this is actually call, right? Actor.call. Um, Expected a type of subject to message. How does actor.call work? Make message. Send a synchronous message and wait for a response from the receiving process. So if a reply is not received within the given timeout, then the sender process crashes. Okay, we don't want that. Um, Let's go to process.try call. I mean, actually, that's fine if it crashes, really. Because, like, <laughs> there's worse problems if it crashes, if it can't get the state. What is make message here? Mm-hmm. I don't fully understand that. automatically does that so I don't have to manage the subject <laughs> now that's pretty nifty except I can't get cover freaking docs on that. I assume this would be client state. Yeah, okay, I can at least annotate it. That's cool. That's pretty freaking cool. Not gonna lie, that's cool. Yeah, just had a beam moment. And then we just pass the mailbox back. Yeah. Uh, I have not. I tried setting it up once and it just didn't work very well.
Okay, so I feel like that's a pretty good API. They send a subscription request in, we give them a subject back and they can select on it to get that one specific event type. I have to go take a leak real quick, chat. I will be right back. Holy shit. Okay, back. Um, okay, so pretty happy where we're at right now. Um, I've gotten less, well, I got less far than we wanted to, but we still got 20 minutes. Let's see how far we can get. So we're gonna need to replace this bit too. Uh, so we now have the subscribe. We need to handle this part. Go look at our token fetcher for some inspiration. Start. And we just want to replace the error here with a. Um, didn't I already do this? I did already do this. We already started it. This is our subject. So this would be a client. Oh, maybe that's what we want. The start spec thing. I forget what I was doing here. Which we should map this to a um, result that replace error with a um, event sub error and this will be event sub start and this should be then a twitch error whoops Thank you for the follow, Didini. Okay. Think I'm starting to put this together. 
So rather than starting our actor here, this is going to, we're gonna do this same thing here. We're gonna say actor, let's just do a let underscore equals actor dot start spec. And that's gonna take an actor dot spec. And that has an init on it. And we'll just say to do. And then it has a init timeout, sure. That was seconds probably fine. And our loop will be handle message. And then our actual start is gonna be this bit. What's wrong with this? Expected a start error. Okay, so we just need to map an error somewhere, which is fine. So let's uh, just comment that all out. And then we're gonna write something similar here, right? We're gonna come into this scope and we're gonna say, we're gonna actually take both of these, throw those there, do this. Okay, and then we're going to say, we'll get this guy. It's expected a start error. Okay, so maybe this can, this can keep returning a start error rather than um, what we were just doing here. That's fine. So we start the WebSocket server and then what do we do down here? We assert, okay, let's yoink these. We start our children, which is our WebSocket server. And then we receive our child subject, which we can ignore. And then we have this loop, which is we don't even need to worry about. Okay, okay.
Why do we need a selector there? I've got errors somewhere. I can feel it. Yeah. WebSocket server dot gleam. All right, we have an error in here. All right, we can just nix that. Gleam build. Okay. In event sub. So that should be over here. Yeah. This will be some. Right? Expected type. The WebSocket server mailbox should get I've got myself OTP wrecked right now. How was I doing this before? We were looping on this. I don't think it should expect that. This should... What is this type? God, else P. So that's going to send a WebSocket server message. And this mailbox here, where does this mailbox come from? That has to come from this init process. Parent mailbox. Yeah, so there's the parent mailbox. Okay, so what's wrong here? I actually am now confused. Expected type option subject message, but found option subject WebSocket message. That is the type we want. Right? Super, I don't know why we're saying this is a supervisor message. Because really this should just be WebSocket message it should be the same deal, right? Yeah, here we go. All right, let's see how actor.ready works. Um, Where the hell's the ready? 
actor dot ready. It's a constructor of some kind. Here we go. How am I using this? We get this selector that we're just selecting on our own process. Raw hat, I don't know if you're still here. Um, oh wait, the call functions basically do the process. Okay, yeah, that's one of the If you're still around raw hat, this selector and this handle message, how are they different or how do they interact? Because it feels like I'm just gonna end up doing the same thing. By default, your actor will handle messages from the subject return from actor.start. If you want to select on other subjects, passing it somewhere else, you can just select on it and return that from init. If you want to select on other subjects. So like, is this how I, okay, here we go. This is, it's about time for me to wrap up chat. Um, Garage door just opened. Justine just got home. Oh, does this? I didn't feed them yet. I'll feed them in a second. Are you kidding me? I'll feed them in a second. They're fine. Did you tell chat about your nightly adventures? Yeah, I did. Oh, 
This is used to ensure I still don't understand the point of this selector here. I don't fully understand that. Because this isn't even... What up, Avalix? Like, I don't understand, I still, like, just don't understand what this selector does in ready. I'm, like, having a really hard time wrapping my head around this. If you want to select on other subjects, that is, you're passing it somewhere else, you need to select on it and return that from init. Oh, so this is, like, a message creator for this to get messages. Ah. Now, now it's, that's mapping. This is a message creator, uh, creator, creator slash factory. Uh, we need to select from the WebSocket server mailbox and transform those into messages this actor can process. Okay. To do Thursday. All right, let's find someone in the raid chat. Uh, let's see here. Swalker, I feel like we got a raid Swalker, right? We gotta do a Swalker raid. Yeah, Meta's already over there. <laughs> 